I call this March 6th work session of the Oconee County Board of Education order. The first item of business is to approve the agenda and we need a motion to do so. So moved. Mr. Burgess? Second. Mr. Ransom, all in favor? Passes 4 0. Next, we have the superintendent's report, Dr. Branch. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, board members, for being here tonight. Thank you, staff. Uh, several great things to celebrate since we last joined together, many of which you were uh, t taking a part in. But uh, I want to thank all of our student, staff, and community since we last gathered. Oconee County Schools was named the number one county school system in the state of Georgia by Niche. And we had, uh, I believe, eight schools in the top 20. Dove Creek was named the number one school for elementary schools in the, in the state. And uh, we have three in the top 10 and four in the top 20. So great work being recognized by uh, ranking systems all over the country. I want to make you aware of that. And thank our uh, leaders for the good work that they do to help uh, support students to get those accolades. Uh, you, we all, many of us had a chance to celebrate Michelle Lee and Victor Wong uh, as they were named the star student for Oconee County, not only Oconee County schools, but all schools. So they move on to the regional competition March 20th in Athens, and we'll uh, wish them well and see where they go from there, but outstanding young people. Uh, kindergarten registration's in full swing, and uh, that started February the 28th, and uh, screenings will take place the 27th and 28th as well, and so we continue to welcome community members to register their students, as that's really an ongoing process uh, that really has just kicked off this week. Um, and so lot, lots of students already registered, but we know many more are still to come. We recognize 13 young Georgia authors at the district level from nine different schools who will also go on to compete at the regional level. And so uh, very talented uh, work, a variety of different kind of works uh, that those students did over the course of that uh, competition. Seven schools participated, all of our elementary schools participated in Read Across America Week, so you probably saw a lot of that on social media. Uh, lots of different silly outfits and sock days and different things out there uh, engaging the students. We appreciate the efforts of the staff to do that. Eighteen students from Oconee County and North Oconee High School uh, qualified for the Governor's Honors Program State Semifinals. That's going to be happening March 11th. Uh, in Statesboro, and so we wish those students well in that next step. And of course, we had an opportunity in February to celebrate our outstanding bus drivers. We continue to appreciate uh, the good work that Dwayne does with our transportation department and our bus drivers uh, supporting the students in the various endeavors. And I think uh, Dallas will show as we started doing just how many miles they're logging each month and the trips that they're doing. I think we have over 50 this week alone. Uh, the Villa uh, program continues and we'll be uh, doing our field trip to Dove Creek Middle School on March the 14th and then graduation will be on the 21st and so we look forward to having you join us on the 21st to celebrate uh, those 22 parents who decided to join us for Villa and uh, we continue to get good feedback from them on that experience. Just a couple more things uh, we want to celebrate the uh, Oconee County and North Oconee for being chosen once again as advanced placement honor schools. Uh, this is something that really occurs yearly and has for many, many years an outstanding work of our students and staff. We had 10 students from Oconee County and North Oconee High School recognized as National Merit Scholarship Program finalists, which is uh, very difficult to do, so outstanding uh, students there. And then we had Several individual state champions in wrestling, uh, Vera Spencer, Dom Lasher of North Oconee, and Nathan Bowen of Oconee County uh, claimed individual titles. And Ms. Spencer made history as the first female champion ever for North, o North Oconee. <laughs> so that concludes Superintendent's report. And lots of celebrations, unless you have questions. Yes, sir. The fact that both of those high school students were star students. Does that mean they made the same score yes, on the test? Yes, sir. I won't ask what they made. <laughs> <laughs> it was very happy. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. 
Branch, I know you don't want to teach your own horn, but I understand you got a Lifetime Achievement Award from University of Georgia College of Education. Yes, ma'am. Congratulations for that. Next on our agenda are presentations and discussions. First, we have Teaching and Learning Report. Welcome, Dr. Stancil. Board members, the March Teaching and Learning Report contains two items of information and no action items tonight. The first item of information is an update on our career, technical, and agricultural education, which we know as CTAE Month. February is recognized as CTAE Month in our own middle and high school CTAE classes utilize this opportunity to promote their program areas and provide information to students and parents during the course registration process. Parent nights were held at the high schools and middle schools to educate students on course offerings and pathway choices, and 8th grade career students had the opportunity to tour our high school CTAE classrooms. CTAE classes decorated doors, hosted trivia competitions, created advisement lesson plans, and used social media to promote their programs, as you can see in some of the pictures here. The Career and Technical Student Organizations, or our CTSOs, also provided staff appreciation breakfast and wore their official dress to promote membership into their organizations. The second item of information is an update on our kindergarten registration process. As Dr. Branch just shared, our parents registered students through our online registration system last week from February 28th to March 3rd. This is an ongoing process, so now that that, um, that window is closed, students can still continue to register. We are so excited to welcome our newest and youngest members of Oconee County Schools on March 27th and 28th, where they will visit their schools for their kindergarten screenings from 2.45 to 5 o'clock each day. And that concludes the Teaching and Learning Report, unless there are any questions. Mr. Burgess? Susan, it's been a long time since I had a child in kindergarten. So my question is, on the immunization forms that are required, is that very similar to what would have been required 10 or 15 years ago? Has it changed much in the last number of years, or is it pretty much the same type of immunization requirements that we've had forever? I would say it's probably pretty typical to what it was. I know it hasn't changed much since I was a principal seven or eight years ago. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have technology. Welcome, Mr. Ryan White. board members and Dr. Branch. Tonight's technology report has no information items and two action items for next week's board meeting. The first action item are the Instructional Support Center network components. Coney County Schools posted a request for proposal for 15 switches, 61 wireless access points, and associated licensing in January 24, 2023 and closed on February 24, 2023. These devices will will provide network services for the Instructional Support Center. The superintendent's recommendation is for the Board of Education <coughs> to approve purchasing these devices from Cirrus Networks with a bid of $148,649 at the March 13, 2023 Board of Education regular session. These will be paid for using ELOS and general funds. The second action item is our technology surplus list. These items have been identified as surplus based on our technology replacement cycle. The superintendent's recommendation is for the Board of Education to approve this surplus list at the March 13th, 2023 regular session. And that concludes the technology report. Unless there are any questions. Any questions? Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Next, we have the Associate Superintendent's report. Welcome, Dr. Liddell. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. The Student Services Report has three items of information and zero action items. The first item of information is our Georgia Student Health Survey. As you know, board members, schools um, are administering that survey from this point forward through March 10, 2023. We've begun that administration at all of our schools and wanted to update you on the fact that we did give our uh, community the opportunity to opt out of that survey after we shared those with them. Uh, if they chose to, and we had 0.3% of the available population uh, take us up on that opt-out. So the opt-out rate is 0.3% for our school system for this year. The second item of information is our school nutrition participation. 
Um, when compared to February of 2020, our breakfast rate increased uh, just over 1% and our lunch rate decreased 0.05%. Uh, the third item of information is our high school graduation ceremonies. As uh, you all are probably aware, uh, we, were, we were notified uh, from the University of Georgia on Friday that Stegman Coliseum has uh, closed unexpectedly and indefinitely due to um, needed repairs. So they did notify uh, all of their stakeholders that they were um, canceling events through June at Stegman Coliseum at this point, which would affect our graduation ceremonies. So after consulting with the high school principals, we've moved those graduation ceremonies to our high school stadiums. Oconee County High School will be May 19th, 2023 at 7.30 p.m. Uh, with the rain makeup date of Saturday, May 20th, 2023 at 10 a.m. North Oconee High School will be May 20th, 2023 at 7.30 p.m. And their makeup will be the following Sunday at 7.30 p.m. This concludes the Student Services Report, unless there's any questions. Questions? Uh, I'll ask Mr. Rickinson to step up and give us an operations report. Good evening. <clears throat> the Oconee County Schools Operation Division March Board of Education report contains four items of information and four action items for the March 13, 2023 Board of Education meeting. The first item of information is the January Energy Report showing an on-trend increase in usage over December. The second is the Lead Custodian Meeting. The February Lead Custodian Meeting was held on Thursday, February 9th and was hosted by the team at Duff Creek Elementary School. The team discussed safety data sheets and the importance of keeping an updated SDAS book on hand. At each facility. Third item of information is construction update. The big news this month, of course, is Dove Creek Middle continues to make great progress. Uh, as you can see in the photos uh, that you have attached, uh, the brick is almost complete on the upper level now, and they've moved around to the to the lower level of the building and working their way back up. The side of being installed on the football field, the side of also being installed in the islands, and the uh, trees are again planted. So uh, that's really good news. Drywall going up in the learning commons and the admin area, so those last few spaces are really shaping up. And lastly, they've started installing windows, so to keep, keep the temperature and humidity under control inside the building as finishes start continuing to go in. The uh, uh, Oconee Primary, Elementary, and Oconee High School modification phase two. Uh, again, the uh, Nothing new to report. Materials are on order. We're getting ready for uh, uh, start as soon as uh, school releases for the summer break. We also have a transportation update. Uh, the transportation department coordinated the following field trips over the past month. 33 field trips, 85, 85 athletic trips, 26 educational trips, and 147 buses were deployed, uh, deployed for these trips. Grand total of uh, just 11,956 miles. Now for our action items, I'd just like to take a brief second to uh, just remind the board of the way we select contractors for uh, for for construction. We use a state uh, a method that's approved by the state. It's called a qualifications-based proposal. Each each proposal is submitted in there and the contractor is evaluated on five different criteria. The, uh, the first five criteria is project approach. It's part of that, one of the things they're judged on is their methodology and approach for completing our specific project, details of their safety program, and also a uh, logistics plan on how they, how they would approach our site and build our building. Factor two is the experience of the proposed project team, so they actually submit the resumes for the team members they plan to use for our project. And we evaluate the work experience they have as a, as a team together, and also as uh, the individual experience that each team member has, and whether they've done work similar to ours. Uh, next is, is the experience of the proposed subcontractor. So again, they submit the resumes of their subcontractors, so that we can evaluate, fill out, and it determine whether they're the best fit for our project. Uh, they also 
Factor four is to offer an overview, which has to do with their company history, their financial standing, their bond rating, uh, and also their, their experience working with Oconee County Schools. <clears throat> and finally, the fifth, fifth factor is cost. And at that point, we open the envelope and find out what their price is, and, uh, and they will get a score based on how their price falls in amongst the others. And for all those things totaled together for a total of 1,000 points to, to choose the winner. <clears throat> Any questions on that? <laughs> Your point is, it's not a low bid project. Not every time. Right. Uh, so, we have four action items this month. The first is Malcolm Bridge Elementary School Edition. Um, <clears throat> Superintendent's recommendations for the Board to, of Education to approve Amaker Brothers construction for the addition of Malcolm Bridge Elementary School for a proposal of $4,499,000. This project will be funded with general fund and new licenses dollars. Action item two, new instructional support center. <clears throat> the superintendent's recommendations for the Board of Education to approve Kevin Price construction for the new instructional support center for a cost of $14,543,708. This project will be funded with the dollars. And third, is Oconee County Middle School basketball gym improvements. The superintendent's recommendation is to the Board of Education to approve Smith & Co. Incorporated for the Oconee County Middle School basketball improvements for the proposed cost of $72,621. This project will be funded with general fund and new lost dollars. <coughs> and finally, action item four is to surplus, the superintendent's recommendation is for the Board of Education to approve the following surplus vehicles which are four buses, 2002, 2005, 2005, and 2005. Any questions? I do. Um, when will the basketball goals be put up? That, the work will be done over the summer. Over the summer. And do we have a projected completion date for Malcolm Bridge Elementary and also the Instructional Support Center. Uh, it is uh, May 31st of 24 for both of those projects. Thank you. Uh, I'm Locker and Kevin Price are both familiar names in the school system. Can you remind me over the last six or eight years what projects either of both of those firms have, have done for the school system? Okay. Uh, I'm Locker Brothers built uh, Dove Creek Elementary School. That's probably how most people know them. Best. Uh, they also built the Colin Ferry edition uh, last year and the High Shoals edition last <coughs> year. Kevin Price Construction last summer they renovated the Oconee Primary and Oconee Elementary Schools. Uh, prior to that they did the North Oconee High School HVAC replacement. Uh, they also did the Oconee High School renovation in addition. And going back to 2017 they did the Malcolm Bridge elementary, Mountain Bridge Mill, and Oconee Mill renovations, and uh, in 2016 they did an HVAC replacement at Oconee Mill, um, and, and there was a, another phase of the Oconee High School renovation in 2015, so they, as, as far back as I can trace, that Kevin Price has done a bit for us. Okay, so we, we've, had, we've had experience with both of them and with good results with both yes, of them. Next, we have communications. Welcome, Mr. Coleman. Good evening, board members and Dr. Branch. The Oconee County Schools Communications March 6th, 2023 Board of Education Report contains two items of information and no action items for the March 13th Board of Education meeting. The first item of information is the monthly highlights video featuring the district and all 11 schools.
Our second item of information uh, involves Villa. Uh, as Dr. Branch mentioned earlier, we do have our last two sessions coming up this month. We'll have a tour of Dove Creek Middle School on the 14th and followed by our graduation on the 21st. And we're so appreciative of the 22 parents that have been uh, participating in this program this year in Port of Port. We appreciate having them with us. And that concludes the communications report, unless you have any questions. The March 21st graduation, we'll do it like we've done in the past. Yes, sir. We'll, we'll, get, field house and we'll, we'll get the North Dakota County Field House. Anyone else? Thank you. We do have a need to go into executive session and need a motion to do so. I'll make a motion that the board will adjourn to executive session to discuss and deliberate upon personnel matters as described on the affidavit to be attached to the minutes. Second. Ms. Parrish. Okay. Mr. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Ransom. <laughs> All in favor? Passes 4-0. Okay. Take a few minutes and clear the boardroom.